Welcome into another edition of EPAC All Access here from Washington High School, home of the Patriots. Colin McLaughlin here alongside me is Spencer Dupuy and Nick Verzellini as we get ready for our season of Washington football team that went 5-5 five and five last year. And I'll start with you, Spencer. What are your expectations for this team this season? Uh, you can just see it, in, and I mean – you can see it in talking to these players that they're ready to go the fourth year in the in the wing offense and I think that it goes to show kind of the culture like we have a sound bite of, of coach Simpson last year saying this is the culture we'll build we're building at Washington High School is trying to get better every single year and that's what they're doing and that's what it appears like they're ready to do this year oh well, I think the expectations have to be for this team to get over the hump. Back-to-back uh, -back five and five seasons. They were in the playoffs one of those years, not in the playoffs last year. I think a winning record has to at least be the first step and then potentially more if they're able to uh, build some confidence uh, based on the last two years. So I think it's a talented team. they got some good athletes on this team. they got a big physical offensive line. So there's definitely some uh, good foundation or a good foundation to have a successful football team. Uh, we'll just kind of have to see how they're able to compete with the rest of the Eastern Panhandle and some of the other tough teams on their schedule. But uh, I like this group. I think I like what I've heard from Coach Simpson. I like how the players seem to be bought in, uh, at least the ones that we've talked to. So uh, it's definitely an exciting team and I think a big year for Washington as a football program to maybe take that next level and uh, really – reach for that winning record and potentially more, like I said. Yeah, the same schedule as last year, just flipping home in a way as they start off the year against Hedgesville, who they beat last year by a final score of 20 to nothing. Both teams, however, on an up and up, it seems like, program-wise. So this should be a challenging week one for them being on the road. But I like this Washington team, as Nick, you just said. They have a lot of athletes, but when you look at the facts, they have the same schedule as last year, and a lot of the same guys. I mean, you never know how the other teams are shaping out, but on paper, and that's what you really have to go off of during the preseason, it would make sense that if it's the same team almost, the same schedule, that it should result in the same record. Am I going on the right direction there, or do you guys disagree? Yes, I mean, no. it depends on where, where these other teams are in difference from last year. And, you know, you look at the schedule. Mention mentioned Hedgesville first. That's away. Home against Spring Mills. They get to be home against Frankfurt this year instead of traveling there. Then they play two out-of-state teams in Northern Virginia, Independence out of Ashburn, Virginia, Parkview out of Sterling, Virginia. They're away for both of those games. And then they're home against Martinsburg. Going to be a tough contest because Martinsburg is Martinsburg. Then they're home against Preston at Musselman, home against Hampshire, and close out the season with the Jefferson County rivalry against Jefferson. I mean, you look at that schedule and, you know, the end of that, the, the final game is going to be a tough one. Obviously, Martinsburg is going to be a tough one, but there's a good chance they can handle both of those teams out of Northern Virginia and Frankfurt, I believe a double-A team, uh, along with Preston. Preston might be single-A. I think Preston might be single A, but Hampshire I know is for double sure a. that Hampshire's triple A. Hampshire is triple A, you're right. Yes. So it's going to be a tough schedule, but I think that they have a good shot to at least repeat as 5-5 five and five or maybe even potentially get better, especially if you know, a game here or there goes the other way. Yeah, I think. And they had two forfeited games. Sorry to butt in there, but they did have two forfeited games due to COVID last year, one their fault and one not their fault. Yeah, that's a good point. And I think, too, that uh, you know every team is either going to get better or get worse depending on what is coming back for them, what is already on their team, or who, who has improved from last year, what they lost from the year before that. So I think there's a lot of factors, in it, not just the fact that they're playing the same schools so they're going to get a similar result. Um, but, you know, I think the – the Washington schedule, it, while they do have a few double A and, and single A schools, um, those are high quality double A and single A. So just because they're smaller schools doesn't necessarily mean that there's less talent there. So you can't overlook those opponents on the Washington schedule. Uh, but I think this will be a team that, again, goes for around six and four, five and five, seven and three type range. Maybe even if they're able to flip a few games in the EPAC uh, from last year to wins that were losses. Maybe they even get into the eight-win range. But uh, I think they, they got a, definitely a talented team. 
they have high, high expectations for themselves yeah, as a team. And you I always like that's, that. Yeah, that's a good thing. If you have those high expectations, you can uh, definitely you know have a more committed team to maybe getting or putting in the work needed to get those wins. So we'll see about Washington. I think, though, definitely they'll be a competitive team at the very least this year. That week one matchup, Hedgesville, uh, those are two physical football teams. So that's going to be kind of a fun game to really I, get a read on both those teams, I think, this year. And I think that's going to be a tougher game for this year because I think Hedgesville might be coming a lot better ready to play than they were last year. Well, you guys mentioned the expectations that we have for Washington. Let's now take a break, and after that break, we'll hear from Glenn Simpson with his expectations for his team here in Washington. You've been in an accident. Why won't the insurance company pay? Because they're trying to save money at your expense. Call Mansion Ferretti for your free consultation. We have the experience to deal with the insurance company and get you the compensation you deserve. Mansion Ferretti, when you need justice. Welcome back to EPAC All Access as we're joined now by the Washington Patriots head coach, Glenn Simpson. Coach Simpson, welcome into the show. Thank you uh, for having us here at practice here today. Uh, let's get right into it. Five and five last year. Uh, what are your hopes here this year? Oh, I hope for a lot better than five and five. We got an experienced group. Um, we got a bunch of young men who have done all the right things. They've worked the right way. They've put in the time. They've uh, made those football deposits over the last several years. And now it's time to start uh, cashing some of those out. And uh, you're moving a couple guys around on the offense on the wing side here, uh, moving Robel to quarterback, and then moving Delgado to a fullback, and uh, you know, kind of that heavy guy that will t or guy that will take the heavy reps on the wing. Mm -hmm. What does that say about just trying to fine tune that wing? Well, I mean, just like every year, you know, every team is different. Every you know, you have to uh, assess what what you've got on the field, and you try to put them in the best positions to to make you successful. And we feel like uh, Joe's put his time in at the wing position and done a great job for us. But I feel like he's ready to take on a, a more dynamic role, uh, you know, as he's grown up in, in the system. And uh, I'm very excited about what he can accomplish in our system at the quarterback position. We've talked a lot about uh, with both the players and, and you so far, the offense. Uh, who kind of has stood out to you defensively so far though, this uh, summer? Well, uh, there have been a few. There have been a few. Uh, DJ Smith and uh, well, all of our linebackers, DJ Smith, Chase Crutchley, and Garrett Fauble have done a phenomenal job in our stack. Um, they are they are really playing fast football right now. Uh, I'm excited to see them in the scrimmage this weekend. Uh, our defensive line, I mean, they're going to be so much fun to watch this year. You know, I, I believe we got some dudes. We got. I'll put my D line up against anybody. We are good. All right. I, I'm excited for them as well. And, uh, you know, Joe out there at corner has been, been a, a great uh, position for us. He, he's been so good for us at corner the last couple of years. I expect him to continue to, to uh, show how good he can be. What's it been like uh, teaching these guys the wing mm -hmm. type style offense because – it's one of the more unique styles, so kids nowadays probably don't even think of that style anymore. How is it like training them and getting them used to that? Well, the, the part that's, that's interesting, the part that's really unique is, you know, when you take uh, most, of these, most of these young men growing up, they have played flag football, which is great. And, you know, there's, there's lots, of, lots of things to draw on from that experience. But the single wing, it, it is so contrarian to the, the norms in football today. And that's what makes it so unique for us. You know, that's, that's why, why we embrace it so much. Because what they have to, they're going to learn more about themselves than they are about the scheme. Because it requires a level of physical and mental toughness to do something that you maybe have never done before. 
the the attitude the blocking demeanor the the attitude that um you know you are going to spill your guts out on the field to do something that is not necessarily going to bring glory to you all right so uh, we embrace that that's a part of our team culture uh part of our brotherhood and so that as much as anything is what i think is going to help us be successful is the buy-in to that culture that that the team is more important than me i'm going to block my tail off because my team is going to be successful and we've talked about it on our show recently it it seems like you guys you know coming in the last two seasons being five and five uh with just the numbers that you that you have comparatively to the other schools Mm -hmm. it's a pretty impressive to go to have to be 10 and 10 over two years with an average of about 30 players on a team how's the numbers looking this year coach well we're about the same we we got a pretty consistent uh stream of uh of young men coming into our program um I'd like to say that that we are increasing a little bit. We're starting to get some interest in the school. Kids kids who are already walking the halls, they're like, wow, you know what, I think I'd like to come play football. So they're starting to matriculate out to us in that regard. We have a few more players right now than we've had the last couple of years. I feel like we're uh, growing a bit. And a lot of it has to do with these guys because they go out there and and they live our culture you know it's not it's not a show it's not put on they live it and a lot of kids are drawn to that so i i feel like we're we're building a little bit we're getting a few more people and uh i think it's all the future's bright here at washington high school what stands out to you so far about this group uh and and just the way they've worked and you've been with them for four years now so this group loves to be together. They it doesn't matter that you know you'll find you'll find a, a bunch of them at IHOP, you know after morning workouts. You'll you, you know you get them in the locker room. They're at home. They they love being together. Very tight group. And it seems like you have a pretty disciplined group here. They all come down about you know 15 minutes prior to practice you said you guys get on the field at at 3:30 mm-hmm. so it just seems like it's a very tight knit group well it's tight knit group and we have some great leadership on the on the team uh, we have a a group of volunteers who uh, want to be a part of our uh, leadership development group and so they get uh, tasked with different responsibilities and um we take the opportunity for different uh, learning experiences and so forth and help them to uh, learn some things outside of the, the game of football. And as that occurs, that trickles out from the team, from, from those leaders out to the rest of the team. And, you know, that leads to exactly what you're talking about. Week one, you guys take on Hedgesville on the road on Thursday. We'll have that game on TV 10 as well as Talk Radio WRNR. Uh, what will we see from your team during that game? You'll see a lot of grit. You'll see a lot of discipline. Um, you'll see a, a competitive spirit that I think is going to be the hallmark of this team this year. All righty, thank you, Coach Simpson, as we wrap this segment up here on EPAC All Access. Next, we'll be joined by quarterback for Washington this year, Joe Vrobel. Hi, this is Lauren from Orsini's right here in Martinsburg. Grilling is not just for the boys. We are a platinum Traeger dealer carrying the Pro Series all the way up to the Timberline Series. We have every flavor of wood pellets along with accessories, rubs, sauces, not just Traeger, we carry Utz, Meat Church, Lanes, and Dizzy Pig. We also carry a full line of Yeti products. Orsini's has everything to complete your backyard. Visit us at 360 Hack Wilson Way or at Orsini's.com. Welcome back to EPAC All Access. Colin McLaughlin here alongside me, Spencer Dupuy and Nick Verzellini as we're now joined by Washington Patriot Joe Vrobel on the show. Joe, getting ready for another season here of Washington Patriot football. What are you looking forward to this season? 8-2. Eight 8-2. and, two. Eight and two. My team's looking amazing right now. Um, also, stats, 
four, 400 plus yards a game. My line's looking pretty good right now. That's some huge numbers compared to past years. What's the difference? Difference, everyone's more focused, more committed. Our line is dogs. Like, they can they can do anything. They'll get any hole wide open. And for you guys, the last two seasons, five and five, so obviously you're ready to make that push up to, as you say, eight wins. How does that make you feel knowing that, you know, the last two years you you've been able to put five wins each up and knowing this year your senior season you're ready to go full full fledged to get go as you say eight and two the last two seasons we were put together but not so well but like it's been four years of the single wing we're getting it more getting more rhythm everything's running more smoother it's just amazing so like everybody's doing their assignment everybody's getting where they need to be everybody's dedicated and yeah Joe, when we lost, talked to you is at seven on sevens, and you talked about transitioning to quarterback, and a thing that you wanted to work on was your reads. Uh, how do you think your progress is, I guess, since then? My reads have gotten a lot better. Yeah. There, I still need to work on it, but it's getting there. And I guess, uh, how, how do you feel about the transition to quarterback so far? I'm loving it. it doesn't There's no difference. All the difference is I'm just throwing it too now. Right. And since you mentioned throwing it, it won't typically be too much in the wing but how is it like uh i guess when you do get to throw the ball those opportunities will be like this season it's good i got some nice wide receivers i got rodrigo over there i got brock who else i got multiple guys they all rotate in they can all catch the ball they all got very sticky hands and you know going this into your senior season and you mentioned this eight and two What's the whole team mentality going in this year? Because you said that was your mentality. Is the team mentality the same? Oh, yes, definitely. They're all thinking the same thing. They all want it. Washington, typically a very physical, run-heavy team since you guys moved over to that wing offense. And uh, you mentioned the offensive line up front. Who's kind of stood out to you out of, out of that group? So far, Zach Wharton. Zach Warner stood out to me. Even last year, he stood out to me. Man, pancakes everybody he sees. Anything else, guys, before we wrap it up? Last thoughts, Joe? No. All righty. Well, thank you for joining us here on EPAC All Access. When we come back, we'll be joined by Rodrigo Delgado here on EPAC All Access. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. Back here at Washington High School, welcome into EPAC All Access again. Colin McLaughlin here alongside me, Spencer Dupuy and Nick Verzellini. So we're now joined by Rodrigo Delgado. Rodrigo, welcome into the show. Last year you were the starting quarterback. This year uh, switching roles. What's that switch been like for you so far? Um, it's different. Uh, I like it though. It's you know, I just, whatever my role is for the team, I I'm ready to do it. Whatever it takes, and you know, all we gotta do is win. And speaking of winning last year, you're able to go five and five the year before that five and five as well. You guys ready to make a step up yeah, this year? For sure, definitely. We were trying to. We have a sky's limit for us, and it's just it's just up to us to reach it. And we have lots of talent this year. We just gotta stay focused and motivated, and we can win games. We talked to Joe a lot about the offense uh, defensively. You know, you play in the secondary, and uh, how do you feel about the defense so far for Washington? Well, I feel good. We're we, we reloaded, and we lost some seniors last year, but we reloaded, and we're ready to we're ready to play. Same schedule as last year, opponent-wise, just obviously flipped home in a way. What games are you looking forward to the most this season? Definitely Jefferson. You know, last year we we had we we had a great first half, and then we just lost momentum. And I think that was a team we could have upset, just you know, shocked the state because everyone you know, no one thought we'd beat them. And we had a great first half against them, and then we just lost momentum, and it just slipped out for us. And we talk a lot about the offensive side of the ball for you guys with the single wing, but on defense, obviously. Uh, most of your team seems to be two-way players. That, that's got to talk about the toughness of all your players, the grit to show that not only can you play on offense, but you're going to play on defense and play the whole 90% plus of the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's best of a big part because we all got to stay conditioned, and then we don't have that many kids like most, most teams do in the panhandle. So just for us to be able to do that, is, it's big for us. 
and offensively for you, uh, you're playing wide receiver this year. You played a little bit of quarterback, a little bit of wing. Is that kind of one of the nice things about the wing offense is you kind of can move around a little bit depending on what play or what formation or what you're kind of seeing out of the defense? Yeah, I love I love to run the ball. I love to catch it. I love the block as well, especially with our line. It's going to be very exciting this year. I know this year you'll have more of that running and catching role, but uh, – would we possibly see somewhere in the season you back uh, throwing the ball, maybe a surprise trick play here yeah, and whoever, there? Who knows? It's up to the coach, and if they need me to do it, I got it. And uh, talking about Coach Simpson, it seems like this program has really been able to build up this wing over the last you know, few seasons. What does that say about him building this program, meaning that it's kind of taken this far, but you guys are ready to take it up a notch this year? It's just – it's just it's just up to us and it's just everything that's been put together has been working for us and we've just been we've all it's just come natural to us the offense the defense just us being together and coach is doing a great job you know bringing in new cultures to the school and we've had two pretty good seasons because of it and we're just ready to just blow it up what do you think would be the difference for you guys to get from 5-5 five to five to into a winning record and, and potentially one of the top seeds in the state? Well, whatever it takes, it's we just have to stay disciplined. We have to, we have to stay motivated. We all got to stay on track, and we all got to be ready to play because anything can happen. Like last year, we had COVID troubles, and it, it messed us up, and we got we had a forfeit game because of it. So you should make sure we have to stay focused and disciplined, and we just got to make sure we play football. And you talk about numbers of players on the team. We were talking about this on our show. Uh, it just seems pretty impressive to even be 500 with, you know, looking at the numbers around 30 players on the team last the last couple of years on an average. What does that just say about how everybody's bought into this program and, and that although you don't have the numbers as a lot of the other AAA schools, especially in the Panhandle, that you can still compete with them? Yeah, we, we just love it. I mean, we all hit the weight room. We're all, we're all motivated. We all want to play. We, we just want to win doesn't matter if we have 11 out there just 11 and if we have 50 we had 30 of our best guys and we're just ready to go out and play whether it's both ways three ways four ways all right rodrigo thank you for joining us here on epac all access as we wrap up this segment next segment we'll have the mic'd up head coach with glenn simpson when will i be able to retire how do i make the most of the money i have how do i leave a lasting legacy to my loved ones i'm philip mccoy financial advisor with the marius group a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated. Call us today at 304-263-4343 to help you make the most of your financial future. Our office is located at 1270 Winchester Avenue, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated, member FINRA and SIPC. JV Pass Mechanics, so if you need to be on Pass Mechanics, you're over there. That would be tight ends. Okay, are you JV? There we go. All right, varsity, we're gonna hit run game, run game, run game. We're gonna hit our run game, so let's go ahead. I need I need us to get the first O and I need a ball. Let's go, let's go, let's go. First O, we need a ball. What? No. No, 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 we're just, we're just going offense. Hey, give me that first O. Give me that first O, give me a D. Give me a D. Hurry up. Give me a D. Let's go. Check. Check, check. Relax, relax. Shift, 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 shift. Hold on. Isn't that nice? I just hit behind me. Absolutely. 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 This is thud. This is thud. Absolutely. Thud. Hey, remember, this is not a live drill. We are thud. We are staying up. Best we can. Uh, we got, you know, got to stay up best we can. All right, come back. I want to line up on that. Line up on that, please. That was not bad at all, not bad at all, but I do want to tweak a little something on this. I want to tweak a little something on this. All right. So, got to take a lateral step, okay? Going to show the ball. Boom. But you got to take the lateral step. We need that timing. When you get into your pitch relationship, go. You're going flat, and then you got eyes on him, and you got to bubble a little bit. Okay, you got to get a little bit of depth. All right, you got to sling it out here. Okay, if we're catching the pitch here, we're in trouble. 
okay? If we're catching it here, we're in trouble. I want to be out here, okay? I want to be out here. All right, get in the huddle. I want to be out beyond our seven, out beyond our seven. Remember that depth chart we're, that I put on the locker room wall for offense? Yes, sir. That's, that, that depth chart also extends to the defense, right? This is where you show your worth. This is your opportunity in a live situation to take those things that you've been learning and apply them, and you need to go get it, all right? You need to go get it. Now, we are staying up. This is thud. This is not a live drill. But you need to demonstrate that it's your time, all right? What are you doing? You're not rapping. You're seal and rap lead. Lead, yeah. Seal and lead, okay? You got it? Okay, let's go. Hold on a second. If I, if I, I'll tell you right now, I'm not changing this because of the play. I'm changing this because we are terribly misaligned. Okay? Jackson, you're four yards off, one yard outside the wing. Okay? I need you here. Now I need to move you guys back, right? Because now we've got, all right, you're right here, right here, right here. Okay. Well, no, 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 I'm sorry. Right here. Okay. Outside shade here. You're right here. Outside shade of him. Okay. Okay. You got the shade on the center. You got the shade here. Play him head up. Technical issues, boys. Hey, I'm not used to this, man. I'm no Dan Campbell. This ain't this ain't hard knocks, baby. <laughs> That's what I hear. That's what I hear. All right, so look, you're not going to be out there. You do that, we're going to run a seam right now, and you're going to get smoked. You got to be at, you got to be tighter. All right, now let's go. You guys need it. You need to call again. All right, let's do it. In the huddle. In the huddle. In the huddle. Yeah, we need to get the call again. We need to get the call again. That's nothing wrong with that. All right. He dropped the ball. He dropped the ball. Now, I'm assuming you dropped the ball. That's why you took off. It was a 22. <laughs> Wrong on that. Guess I was wrong again. Don't lose my little, little spongy. You got to be moving. You got to be. Moving. It's a lead snap. You got to be ready to move. You're standing there. You're standing there reaching for the ball. It's. It's no. Was that me? It was it was a bit high and outside. It was a bit high and outside. Okay. okay. Yeah. But he's also he's also not moving. He's reaching with his hand and not not stepping. Okay. Now remember, we're not looking up here. This is where the ball went. We're looking here. I'm talking to you, right? We're looking here. It was way high. The other snap that went wide over here. He also reached, but it was still a high snap. Okay. okay, a little lower. Okay. Hey, why am I pulling you? Why am I pulling the six? Where are you going? Where, where are you? No, you're going to the corner. You're going to the corner. Okay, Kojo. When I am pulling you to get to the corner, you with me? Hey, there is nothing about this practice that is worth diving for a football for. Nothing in practice worth diving for a football.
Hear from every EPAC coach every week on the Sports Mix this fall. They really showed that they have a lot of grit. They can play with just about anybody. That's the culture that we've been building here at Washington High. You know, our senior leadership stepped up and said his playoffs are bust for us. Pretty much the same thing we've been saying since day one. Stay humble, stay hungry. They never solidify some things. But I really think the key for our team is ball control. They do some things that if we're not ready, they'll be the team that's sitting there at 500 at the end of the night. The Sports Mix, weekdays from 12 to 1 and re-aired from 5 to 6. Welcome back to EPAC All Access. Colin McLaughlin here alongside me is Nick Verzlini and Spencer Dupuy as we will wrap things up here from Washington High School as we heard from Glenn Simpson, Rodrigo Delgado, as well as Joe Vrobel. Guys, they have some pretty high expectations. It sounds like it's going to be a very improved team, especially up front with that offensive and defensive lines. Yeah, I mean, you like to see players being confident in themselves going into a season. How can they just back it up on the field? And I think this Washington team being four years into this wing offense and just growing together as a team. And, and you know, we talked about this with Coach Simpson is they're a smaller team compared to year AAA teams, especially in the EPAC. But I think them having grown together over these last four years, a lot of these players now entering their third and fourth years into the program, then it's going to be very helpful for them to uh, see where they've gone the last four years, the last, especially the last two seasons where they were five and five each of those two seasons. I think that, you know, you're at 500. Let's get better than that, guys. If you're, you know, if you're Coach Simpson, you're at 500. Now let's have high expectations knowing that this team is better than it was the last, you know, two years. Yeah, I think Washington is a team that is kind of in the group of unknown, but also there is some, uh, I guess, high expectations because they are in that fourth year of this system. They have some good talent coming back. They have a big physical offensive line. They have good athletes in Vrobel and Delgado, who we just spoke to, uh, who I think can be playmakers for them. But there are kind of some unknowns because they haven't yet shown to be a team to get over 500 so far in program history so uh from that perspective there is some question marks there but i do think washington has uh kind of grown as a program has gotten a little bit more players out this year they got a coach that clearly has a team with i think a, a good message to the team and the team all seems to be very tight so i think a lot of those things can help you get wins especially at this level uh, so this Washington team is one that I could see kind of going either way this year, uh, but I do like a lot of their talent. I think they'll be a physical and a tough team each and every week. Now, what will that result record-wise? I'm not certain, but I think uh, they'll at least be competitive throughout the year and, and give every team you know, a pretty good effort and potentially set themselves up to win it each and every week. And I think that's what's going to make this season fun for the Washington fans is that unknown factor of this Patriots team. Will they finally get over that hump or will they stay put at that 5-5 five and five area? We'll just have to wait and see and Fortunately for us, we get to see it start week one on Thursday night against Hedgesville. So before we wrap things up, any final thoughts, guys? I think this is going to be a good Washington Patriots season. Look forward to following them throughout this year. And, you know, seeing them last year at 5-5, five and five, two of those losses, excuse me, because of COVID, I mean, where can they go? The sky's the limit for this team, especially talking to these players, these kids. Yeah, and I think that week one game sets the tone for the season because I would kind of put Hedgesville and them in like the same – kind of question where would you see them going because Hedgesville is four and six last year so does Hedgesville maybe make the jump over 500 or will Washington kind of make the jump and I think week one is going to do a lot for those teams because obviously you get a win or a loss on your record but also I think it's an EPAC game it's a Thursday night it kicks off the season and it's two teams with very similar styles so who's going to be the more physical team will win that game. And uh, both those teams want to be the most physical team on the field each and every Friday night. So uh, in that case, you're going to have to do it on Thursday night, though. And it, it should be fun. It's It'll be a be good uh, season, I think, for Washington. It's going to be a great EPAC season as we continue to kind of go around the EPAC here on the show. That's going to wrap things up here on EPAC. All access for Donald Kenny, Dylan Bishop, Nick Verzellini, Spencer Dupuy as well. I'm Colin McLaughlin signing off. Thank you for tuning in, and always keep it tuned to TV10 for your high school sports coverage.